for the my open math assignment, this is, uh, uh, well, it's, it's the same deal, a uh, dozen or so questions. And so let me, um, yeah, what produce, yeah, you read about it. And uh, there was one that I wanted to make sure to have some time to go over. Um, and this is about the light waves, wave features. So um, this is this is a long section. It uh, covers quite a bit. So to take a look, I think you can uh, get the necessary information within the first, um, uh, well, first portion of that long section. Uh, let's see. I think yeah, this is what I need to go over because this is a good time to kind of uh, pause and. Uh, look at what you have learned so far. I um, came up with uh, all these choices by basically writing down a lot of the laws of physics that um, that you have learned, and uh, and so um, some laws of physics which do not have anything explicit to do with uh, electricity and magnetism. And that's why I think it's a good opportunity to review some of the physics that you have learned. And um, this is uh, something that's uh, kind of easy for people to miss about physics. Um, even though it looks like there's a lot of math in physics, and there is sometimes, and, but um, the thing that people often miss in physics is that every equation you see, every formula you see, it's supposed to tell a story. It's supposed to tell you something that could be expressed in English language. So I want to illustrate that with uh, some of that. Uh, so for example, it said uh, this one, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction of that Newton's third law. So by the way, so that's not one of the correct choices. So it's uh, Newton's third law. And I guess this one um, isn't often expressed in equation form. Uh, we could say force on B by A is equal to minus of the force on A by B. Let me see if there's one that um, we say more often. Well, I guess uh, this one is um, a bit closer. An object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Oh, that's another one of Newton's laws. It's uh, um, the way it's stated, it is Newton's first law, but I think it, uh, good opportunity to look at Newton's second law, because that's also, in a lot of the ways it is kind of related. And in Newton's second law, in equation form, what you have said is that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And once again, it's uh, easy for many students to look at that, think of that as an equation, formula, a mathematical thing. But what I want you to, what I want you to get from this is a narrative, a story that it's telling. Because the story that it's telling is that when you look at the acceleration on, of an object, that acceleration is proportional to the net force on that object. The, there's a, uh, there's a principle or story and narrative that can be expressed in English language. Um, so, all right, uh, I have uh, quite a few more to roll out. So it, it does tell me four Maxwell's equations. So, um, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna use process of elimination. That's the thing to do. Um, the first statement, um, that seems maybe plausible. So I'm gonna, Leave that alone for now. Um, let's see. Oh, net change of internal energy is the net heat transfer minus work done. That is another law of physics that you learned. Um, oh, that's part of exam three. This is the first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics. Um, 
or you know sometimes we call it conservation of energy and so in connection with the first law of thermodynamics this is what you have seen change in the internal energy is equal to net heat transfer minus work done by the system and this is um, so it, it this uh, equation formula tells a, 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 a story in a couple different angles so it, uh, it it's an expression of conservation of energy in that it's saying that in order for energy to change that the change in energy has to be accounted in some way it's accounted by either energy flowing into the system in the a way of heat transfer because it's thermodynamics we kind of pointed out as one thing and just before this is a chapter nine stuff just before chapter nine you are looking at mechanics where we have work done and one of the other ways that energy can change is through the work done by the system that transfers energy to out of the system that's why there's a minus sign but what i'm trying to highlight here is that this uh, formula tells a story of energy conservation. And the reason I'm trying to highlight this is once you learn to look at these, what looks like mathematical equations as something that expresses a physical principle, a story, then it becomes easier to memorize. <laughs> and it really comes down to that. Uh, or at least that there could be a motivation uh, for people who are not in love with the physics as I am. All right, uh, electrostatic force is a conservative force. All right, that may, may, okay. So I'm doing process of elimination. So um, I don't have to make a decision on whether it's a, uh, one of the four Maxwell's equations or not. Let me move on. Um, I already did the next one. A changing magnetic field induced an electric field. All right, that seems like one of the electromagnetic stuff. Okay, magnetic field lines are continuous, having no beginning or end. Oh yeah, this one, um, it may sound wrong um, <laughs> to some people even. Uh, it has to do with what's uh, fundamentally producing magnetic field. So if you read through, um, well, it might be described in section 12.1. Um, basically it comes down to uh, there's no such thing as magnetic monopole. So when we talk about North Pole, that's more of a kind of a conceptual approximation. So uh, something that produces a dipole magnetic field, like a, uh, like a bar magnet would, is actually produced by a loop of current that you will see when you finish magnetism. And the kind of magnetic field generated by the loop of current looks like it is. So it looks kind of like dipole magnetic field, but uh, what the statement says is right. If uh, these field lines have no beginning or end, they don't begin anywhere. They kind of go in circular loops. Um, <laughs> okay, but so let me just leave that alone for now. The net electric field at a given point is the sum of electric field from each individual charge distribution. Um, I guess I should say what that is. Um, we don't emphasize this quite as much as maybe we should. Uh, this is called the superposition principle. You've seen this phrase, superposition principle, in a different context uh, with wave motion. And in some sense, it's uh, the similar idea. It's the idea that the net effect, the total effect, if it is given by simple sum. So this principle, which held for wave uh, motion, also holds for fields, electric fields and magnetic fields. And there's some deep underlying mathematical reason for that. And I'll uh, have you learn that if you take uh, upper division <laughs> physics classes as a physics major. <laughs> So, so, um, so this superposition principle, it's a wonderful principle. It's good to know. It's not one of the four Maxwell's equations. So let me uh, cross out the ones that are not uh, and see if we are down to four. If not, we have to eliminate some. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five. 
All right. Um, so this is something you should get from actually reading the section. Now, the four Maxwell's equations, uh, they describe what produces electric fields and magnetic fields. So um, the fact that magnetic fields are generated by current or by changing electric field, um, that is correct. And that uh, describes one of the law, Maxwell's laws. That's uh, uh, magnetic fields, that's Ampere's law, which was covered the last chapter. And that's one of the four Maxwell's equations. And let's keep going. Um, is the, a changing magnetic field induces an electric field. Yeah, that is uh, right. And it, this was also covered. It's called the Faraday's law. And uh, once again, uh, a uh, law that describes how a field is produced. That's a, kind of the reason that the reason that tar uh, of Maxwell's equation. That's a, the reason for existing for Maxwell's equations. Um, and okay, this thing about electrostatic force being a conservative force, which is wonderful. Uh, it's a, uh, it's uh, I don't know how, what kind of name to give. I mean, it seems correct, and it is correct, but it's, uh, I guess conservation of energy is a more broader principle than Maxwell's equations, which is, um, you know, specific to electricity and magnetism. So I don't think that this is correct. All right, so that leaves the two choices, so those must be right. <laughs> so let me check them. And these actually do have a name, these two things that I just checked. They are both called the Gauss's law. And it's something that we are not able to um, cover in great detail in this class where you haven't taken multivariable calculus. But it's called the Gauss's law and it uh, has um, a great importance, a significance, usefulness in um, electricity and magnetism. Um, all right, so let me uh, submit and see if I got anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. I got everything right. Um, yeah, so that's uh, it. Oh, I guess this is one of those questions with the feedback where um, you have this. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, let me clear this all off. I think that's the only question I wanted to go over. There are some questions that superficially involve calculation like this one. And the only calculation you really need is comes from this uh, law of, or um, Definition of index of refraction. That index of refraction is the speed of light in vacuum divided by um, speed of light in the medium. So in each of these, you have the index of refraction and you are asked to pick the speed of the light in the medium. So I guess uh, you need to solve this, do a little bit of algebra to get the expression. V is the speed of light in vacuum which is three times 10 to the eight meters per second divided by N. And it's, I think most of you can do that calculation. So let me uh, move on. Um, and I think that was it, but let me just uh, look through the rest to, to make sure there aren't any tricky multiple answer questions that, um, oh, this one. Yeah, let me review it. I think that section literally has the same figure. So um, I think you should be able to kind of go back and forth between the section and uh, and the, that particular question to answer it. Does it have literally the same figure? Um, I must have gotten that figure from somewhere. Um, hmm. Uh, well, I use this <laughs> as a rule. Lenses that are thicker in the middle are converging and the lenses that are thinner in the middle are diverging. Where did I get this um, Get this from? Oh, I got, got that from Wikipedia. All right. Um, uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, polarization of light, which is a very practical aspect of light. You can read about it in the section. Um, 